She came halfway across the universe to fight the diabolical evil of transphobia. Who is she? Who on earth are you? You know, I think I recognize the costume. This March, QCC proudly presents Tita Ida. Today on Live and Queer. Welcome to Live and Queer, QCC's Queer Art Show. I'm your host, Maya Chinchia, and with me today is trans community superwoman, Tita Aida, who you might also know as Nikki Kalma. She's one of the organizers for San Francisco's Trans Day of Visibility. So let's bring her on and talk all about it. Tita Aida, everyone. Hey, hi. Hi, Maya. Hi. I'm so glad you could be with us today. Well, I'm happy to be here too. You just have to forgive me. I kind of like lost my voice, but I'm going to try to make up for it. So yeah, thanks okay. for having me. <laughs> great, great. I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, we'll get into it. But before we do, um, I would love to show a video from TDOV. Yes. Um, but a little warning to our viewers that there is some fast cuts and flashing lights. So um you can fast forward and and then get to the interview if that's something that bothers you. All right, so here we go. Let's let's take a look. Hello, everybody. I don't hear anything. Come on. Welcome to Trans Day of Visibility. Wow. Okay. So that was that was fast, but I think I think I saw a lot of familiar faces, and everybody looks so fabulous. Mm -hmm. Oh my. I'm so excited about it. Do, do you, what are you, are you excited about uh, this year's event? It's, it's one of those events that I look forward to in putting together, being part of it. And at the same time, just kind of like celebrate, it's a celebratory event. So um, yes, I'm very excited and it's nice to get people involved in it. So great, great. Yes. So everybody looks super fabulous, but for those who aren't as familiar with TDOV, mm -hmm. can you uh, tell us a little bit about why it's important? 20 years ago when I started out this work, you know, we didn't have any of this stuff going on. We didn't even have You're events. a baby. You're yeah. a baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but it was like, it was so hard before because there were no support groups. There were no, yeah. no, no events that would bring us together. And it would always be kind of like something tragic or kind of like sad mm -hmm. when we would all come together. So throughout the years, you know, I think uh, the awareness came about where we should, we knew that there were higher, high uh, rates of crimes and uh, murders of trans women, spe specifically trans women of color. Um, and we called it uh, Gwendolyn uh, Ann Smith coined this uh, day called Transgender Day of Remembrance. And um, to okay. counteract that, we had Rachel Crandall from Michigan, who in 2009 kind of like okay. founded this, uh, she's a transgender activist and she founded the Transgender Day of Visibility because, you know, I mean, mm. sure we can, we can, you know, we, we need to mourn uh, the demise of our sisters and everything. And at the same time, also, we're still fighting, you know, and I think what yeah. the best way to do this is to become visible, and right. and the, and the fr and it came to fruition where we now have pr laws that protect trans folks. We have now yeah. uh, able to access opportunities such as education, you right. know, employment. I love that. I love that. You know, I mean, yeah, for sure. There's the remembrance part and acknowledging the the horrors in our society, but also the visibility, the fabulosity. I mean, that's what I love about even that short little clip is 
Everybody is, you know, they're they're at their best, they're thriving. You know, San Francisco is one of those cities that really prepare for this and uh, makes it a big deal, really a big deal, because we, we you know we don't know the number of trans folks here in San, living in the Bay Area, but we know it's a big number. And um, on that day, we have a couple of events that are happening. Uh, we will there is a uh, um, the Global South Transgender Day of Visibility. Okay brought together by five organizations, Parivar Bay Area, LGBT Asylum Project, Ela Para Trans Latinas, Al One Foundation, and Office of Transgender Initiatives. Um, mm, it is okay. an, an imperative aspect of Transgender Day of Visibility, especially in the dire state of affairs for transgender communities here in the United yeah. States. Because, you know, uh, the transgender community is very diverse. You know, we, we don't yeah. think of just like, we all look alike or we all, <laughs> you know, dance alike oh. or something you know and no. the struggles of different trans folks especially those who seek um, refuge here in the United States you know mm -hmm. they, they, they really go through a lot um, right. and it's not easy uh, to prove that your life is in danger if you go back to your uh, your country so Absolutely. this is going to be yeah this is going mm -hmm. to be a very um, powerful symposium they're going to have a panel um, to talk about this how we can support them and how how mm -hmm. we can really educate ourselves around these issues of asylum and also Ooh, okay. um, the yes. political mm -hmm. aspects of being, you know, being transgender in different in different countries because the whole world yeah. it's a whole different place out there. So that's going to happen on the, the day of Transgender Day of Visibility, March thirty oh, first, okay. from twelve o'clock to I believe one o'clock, and then okay. they're going to have a uh, Global South TDOV Network Power Hour where they're going to invite different folks who really would like to really learn more and 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 and, and and talk to the folks who are, you know, uh, doing this work. Um, you know, the, the leaders of this work is really Ella Para Trans Latinas, an organization in uh, in the mission that serves a lot of trans Latinas. Yes. And then we're going to have this big celebration mm -hmm. because it, we're so happy that it happens. It's happening on Friday, and um, you know, party. Yeah, you don't no work on Saturday, so. But uh, we're going to have our big celebration where we bring everybody together from. Okay. 6 o'clock to 9.30 at the Somarts Gallery. And we're going to be uh, giving some awards uh, for folks who've been doing this work. We have some entertainment. And of course, we have some great food. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, like, it's going to be, it's a it's a celebration. It's a uh -huh. commemoration, bringing people together. And we're going to have a little resource fair also there where all the different organizations who support this event uh, will, are, are able to table and, you know, provide information for community so that's so great not only getting all the information educating the community you know making sure we know all of those intersections and those levels of you know mm -hmm. privileges and and power and as, as well as specific people's you know challenges that had, and, and ways that we can support and then also celebrating together that's that's so fabulous and everybody's welcome everybody's welcome it's a free event so wow so I'm I'm looking forward to to um, seeing that event coming up but also you've been in, involved in so many things I mean you've been involved in not only um, Trans Day of Visibility but also Trans March um, the Sparkle Winter Ball mm -hmm. API stage can you tell me I mean just between you and me you, nobody else is listening right now <laughs> yeah. which one is your favorite well <laughs> that's gonna be very difficult to say to, to answer because I you know one thing I always say to folks whenever people ask me like well which event do you really enjoy you know being involved with is that is because I, I really just love being in the community I think mm -hmm. um, there are some folks who are built and and destined to be really community movers and shakers mm -hmm. and I can selfishly say that I'm one of them because ah, you know when I got here in the United States um, moved here from the Philippines I really was looking for community I was looking for a group or or some a, a, a body of people where I can kind of like 
just be part of. And um, luckily, I was able to get myself in, involved in this in this uh, in this uh, circles of uh, of of uh, infrastructure of involvement. You know, so and. Um, I I, I I like them all. I really like them all. I think, of okay. course, it's really it's, <laughs> it's really like picking a it's like picking a child. Yeah, I guess you're not uh, supposed to. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like I think the the of course the more the more the celebratory ones are the ones that I enjoy the most. But it's yeah. also important to be reminded that you know we're we're just not only celebrating. We're also trying to pave the way for the future generations, you know, and that's when we bring in the Transgender Day of Remembrance, you know, mm -hmm. when we also yeah. have, I mean, visibility comes in so many different uh, levels, you know, I mean, we have now job fairs that are specifically for LGBTs, you know, uh, Q, right. I, and okay. we also have, um, you know, programs that are at once, a lot of the transgender programs have been driven through, has been produced and are driven by HIV prevention dollars and now we okay. have the Human Rights Commission getting all involved because actually being trans is not an HIV issue you know I mean right. we are in, that's like one of the ways that it started right was getting funding through that people started mm -hmm. to see how important that education was mm -hmm. but yeah, and, and more and, than that. Yeah, and we were, I mean, trans women, specifically trans women of color, were the most highly impacted because we're always the last to be <laughs> to be counted, you know. So, and and even with prep, you know, we were the last one to be given uh, opportunity to pr do a study on how prep oh. is effective in our community. You know, could be could mm -hmm. be a tool for HIV prevention. But now we have all this yeah. amazing opportunities of funding from the human rights commission from the okay. city itself you know that are that's not great. really hiv driven you know so mm -hmm. that's fabulous so i'm um, yeah and we need like very focused targeted you know uh, events and support so that sometimes it's the smaller groups or the mm -hmm. smaller like i mean even doing something just specifically for the api community i mean that's that's important as well as the the larger mm -hmm. you know that are that are more uh, expansive um and kind of cross community so yeah. that's great that you've mm -hmm. been able to be involved in those and that your shine and your energy um really kind of comes through and, and brings people um, oh thank you <laughs> yeah no that's why i'm i mean i've just looked at some of your history i mean man wow you <laughs> have been here right and you have been doing it and um that energy to to persist um in the face of all that we struggle with and on all that the specifically the trans community struggles with that's that's just uh that says a lot you know um, I, I, I have an ongoing joke with that. That's what happens when you're single and do not have a pet, you know, so. <laughs> not even a pet, man. Maybe after this show, you know, I don't know. You're looking for someone in particular. We, you know, I we're worldwide, I think. So we as long as someone. they breathe and, you know, brush their teeth, that's fine. <laughs> Hygiene, yes. hygiene, please. All right, we'll put we'll put the word out. Um, and also, um, uh, so, but because these events, a lot of times you um, make it a point to make or to provide food at these events. Why do mm -hmm. you think that that is important? Part of you know building community or bringing people together. Well, you know, I can for me personally, I trace this back to my culture, my Asian culture. Okay. You know how um, we, in many of our culture, Asian cultures is that food brings people together. You know, mm -hmm. we have this thing that like whenever you go to the restaurant, you know, you have the option to order either a rice plate or are you ordering family style, you know? So, uh -huh, yes. so, so kind of like, it's like family style. It brings people together. If you ask me probably 10, 20 years ago, what makes a good support group? You know, I mean, I would say a good facilitator, a good curriculum, you know, and yeah. that's it, you know. And now if you ask me what makes a good support group click, you know, great food, you know, because people love to come together and food. And it's kind of like become a tradition, I think, um, yeah. you know, a lot there's and then and, and sometimes there is this other face of this where, you know, not a lot of our community members in the trans community you know are able to enjoy 
you know, I mean, they 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 are impacted by food justice, you know, and right. they 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 sometimes, especially folks who live in SROs, you know, they don't have mm-hmm. the means to really prepare a warm meal, you know, they live right, off because they don't even have a kitchen, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So so I think there's this thing about food where we bring to get we bring together, like at at, at our drop-in center at Tran, Trans Drive, you know, we always make uh-huh. it a point to prepare warm meals for everyone yeah. because sometimes a lot of a lot of the folks who come to us this is they revolve their lives around this because it's so yeah. important it, it's like if you if you don't have if you don't have food in your stomach you're gonna be grouchy the whole day you know you're gonna you yeah, right able, yeah you won't be able to, to think well you know and then more if you add it more if they don't have a place over their uh, a roof over their head then you really are not stable you know so so yeah. little by little we try to to make it up and um you know there's a lot of great organizations out there that provide different kind of stuff and um hopefully that all of this when you come together yeah absolutely and I, i i mean i really feel that too that If there's food somewhere, it feels like caring, you know, it feels mm-hmm. like like love, like, you know, like a family or, mm-hmm. you know, like somebody took the time um, to to make a space for you, you yeah. know, make a space for you at the table, almost figuratively and literally. And um, and yeah, you know, and then and then you don't have to choose either or between going to a space and trying to figure out what's happening next for your own life. Yeah. yeah. And we also try to look at when food is being served you know I, i i always look at it like if if, if it was prepared with pride if it was prepared mm-hmm. with love you know yeah. because people feel that Absolutely. really it's an essential part <laughs> so i want to uh get into a little bit about um your work your activism mm-hmm. um and your performance you uh, tell me a little bit about your name tita aida i mean um you You, it's like your alter ego almost, mm-hmm. right? But or but but what's what's this origin story of Tita Ida? Tita is how we call our aunties in the Philippines, and I think it's very it's very common, especially for those like, for example, as she's mentioned, you know, um, when when your country or your your area where you grew up and was colonized mm-hmm. by Spaniards, you know, I mean the yeah. Tio Tia and all this stuff, mm-hmm. and even in Hawaii they call Tita like a, a an older, a wiser sister and okay. um in the in the 90s when hiv was at its, at its peak um i got involved with the filipino task force and aids and they um i got i volunteered and it was really a challenge because filipinos were ranking the most that is getting impacted and infected with hiv and oh, wow. it, it was okay. really more of like i think that uh we did just needed to claim like, what can be what can be an effective intervention to really you know we're not trying to eradicate hiv in the philippine but we're just trying to reduce the infection so people yeah, can educate harm, people yeah. you know so yeah. so there's this famous um <laughs> character back in the philippines and uh she was this nouveau rich kind of like suddenly became rich uh um I would call like a Donya, you know, like in a okay, song. yeah, yeah. So, and um, yeah. It, it was a stand-up comic, and then we kind of oh, like okay. thought about it and said like maybe we can combine that with a Dear Abby that we see here, you know, like a com- oh. advice column. So, okay. so that's when we fused it in, and it was like in, in the beginning of the uh, epidemic of eight of AIDS and HIV, where yeah. Filipinos will have will coin this this phrase like Tita Ida as someone to refer someone who has HIV or AIDS you know just like oh. to kind of like you know so so it was because and then so they kind of like decided well, let's make it a character let's see what it can yeah. do you know and it skyrocketed I mean like I had my little pamphlets that had letters in it and then I responded okay. to it and the letters were all about education you know because yeah. a lot of Filipinas were just not ready to deal in face the, uh, the 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 fact that you know Filipinos i mean hiv does not discriminate you know so right. and Absolutely. then 
we decided. And if you to don't talk about it, that doesn't that doesn't make it go away. By absolutely. Not, like, keeping it silent. Yeah. yeah. And we did this show every Sunday, not every Sunday, but I think uh, every third Sundays at the famous N Touch Club, where okay. we we had different concepts. Like we had the Star Search karaoke. You know, I Ooh. emceed it. <laughs> we had a Go Go Boy contest, and uh, it, part of it yeah. is that I would read a letter that we. We, we came up with and it was dealing with someone's having dilemma of not using a condom or not ah. very or someone who likes to bottom and just just doesn't like to use any protection or things like that right. and and yeah. I would respond live in and in, in, in a in a in a funny but also educational yeah. like way. auntie yes, yes the auntie, exactly but the one that was going to tell you the real deal right mm-hmm. yeah. yes and, yeah and, we all need an auntie like that yeah. absolutely and that's when I kind of like it picked up yeah it was just so let's a good vehicle that people yeah just kind of like went on the bandwagon and Tita Ida, Tita Ida then and became to a point where I was a point person if you needed information. So that's so important, that visibility and someone that you, you know, feel comfortable talking to about it so that it can de stigmatize it and also, you know, hopefully eradicate it or at least be able to I mean both people are living and thriving also oh, as yes. well mm-hmm. with HIV and AIDS now too. So that's so important to have that that love and support and and it sounds like you did in such a fun way because that's popular education that's how we get you know community activated is Mm -hmm. is really meeting them where they're at right that's great Mm -hmm. that's so fabulous what a legacy (laughs) your signature uh performance um (laughs) that you performed at asia sf and you performed as supergirl (laughs) and i and i it involves fire too oh my gosh what tell me a little bit about why supergirl Girl. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, um, you know, when it, 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 there's a really funny story about this, where I was not supposed to, to uh, audition at Asia S. It was my roommate who wanted, and she was telling me, "Please audition and do don't do a good job because you know I want to get in and everything." So, so I was just like, "Okay, let me do a Gloria Stefan number, and you do okay. your conga thing, you know." And behold. I was the one who was chosen to be part of it. And then I was like, <laughs> and you, wow, you tried to be bad, but you I, just couldn't. <laughs> it could, no, but it was just like, I was just not even lip syncing. I was like, just doing uh-huh. bubble gum, bubble gum, bubble gum, you know? So, yeah. and, and, and it's what I found out is that it's easier, it's easier to become sexy versus mm-hmm. to make people laugh or to make people smile because yeah, you gotta really, you gotta sure. really, make them see something in order to laugh you know so okay and um we came up with this idea where supergirl was uh because there was that that missing piece everybody was doing all these popular tunes and here i come mm-hmm. with uh i need a hero by bonnie tyler and then oh yes <laughs> yeah we we added all these punches and all these kicks and then uh-huh. at the end uh there's this big explosion and then they the bartenders blow fire at me you know so to, to end the whole production number so and it became a signature it was always a closer for every show when I work on Fridays Ooh. and Saturdays and uh-huh. I was really getting tired of it too because it was just really like I did it for how many years almost like nine years but oh wow um, I bet you're doing it in your sleep <laughs> I, oh I I sing it in my in the shower and everything so <laughs> but um yeah no that was it and then I do other numbers too but I think um mm-hmm. It was, um, I was never in the circuit of perform of folks performing in clubs. Um, oh, okay. I stayed in at Asia SF because first, um, I mean, it was a great opportunity. It, you know, we did uh, 75% of our uh, um, patrons are women and uh, they're oh. all cis women. And there's something oh. we do up there that clicks yeah. with them you know and yeah. and the men yeah. you know i think there is this part now that they're coming to a, an awakening where hey you know this is a form of entertainment this is something yeah. that we see on tv now we see on so many on many media outlets you know so yeah. so starting to open up you know people's minds and educate people about who the community is really yeah yeah, absolutely. And that, you know, your artists, your your 
there's a craft there and we learn and we use a lot of the language from like the queer and trans community Absolutely. style fashion you know so i mean that fabulosity i can i can identify with that for sure because i think i learned a lot from you know uh you know queer and trans folks about my own you know femme and fabulosity and just mm -hmm. being able to be comfortable and and not be afraid of of being who you really are that's that's like such a powerful uh you know message and yeah. and we all deserve we all deserve that joy you know mm -hmm. and and all the things that we need so um yeah i mean is there and i love that you brought you brought uh, Supergirl back because you know she doesn't get as much play and I that know. old school movie is so camp so terrible but it's so fabulous so um, we should all go back and watch it and, th and think about you have you in mind <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you so so much for spending time with us today sharing a little bit of your history and you're just your bright light. I'm I'm just so um, honored that you you took some time with us today. So um, I appreciate it so much. So thank you so much for being You're on our welcome. show. You're welcome. It's my pleasure to to you know share it, share who I am and who whatever I could you know if I can inspire anybody, even just one one person. That's good enough for me. So absolutely, and just one, yeah, just one, and maybe I'm I'm most likely a whole lot more. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maya. Um, <laughs> if you want to attend this year's Trans Day of Visibility in San Francisco, it's happening this Friday at SoMarts. It's free and yes, there will be food. The event is also being streamed so you can celebrate from anywhere around the world. For more info, go to at TDOVSF on Facebook. And to follow Tita Ida, you can find her at Tita Ida on all the socials. Links for everything are in the description. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and to spread the word about this super event. Okay, that's our show for today. See you next time. <laughs>